Hi, I'm Michelle Reyes with Marion Audubon, and today I'm going to teach you how to identify birds with a free app for your phone called Merlin Bird ID. When you first download the app, it's going to ask you to sign in or sign up. If you already have an account with eBird, you can use the same login ID and password. When prompted, you will need to download a bird pack, and this is important because there are over 10,000 different species of birds in the world. So the bird pack allows you to download only the species that occur in your area. For Florida, we're going to download the Southeast U.S. bird pack. Keep in mind, if you're going to be traveling outside of the area, you'll want to download the bird pack for that area before you leave home. All right, so we are ready to identify our first bird. I'm going to share my screen with you. The wonderful thing about the Merlin app is that it can help you identify birds with just three pieces of information, the size of the bird, the colors that you see, and what it was doing. Now let's walk through the app together to identify this beautiful bird. You'll see the Merlin icon towards the top right of my screen. I tap it to open. Then I'm going to tap Start Bird ID. First, select the location of the bird and the date. Let me explain why this is important. Remember when I said there are 10,000 species in the world? More than 700 of them are found in the US, more than 500 in Florida, and nearly 280 species right here in Marion County. As you focus in on the location, the number of possibilities is reduced which helps with identification. Next, we should briefly talk about migration. Of those 280 species, some of them live here year round, some just winter here or spend summer here, while others only quickly pass through while migrating to their breeding or wintering grounds. So when we select a particular date, Merlin reduces our list of possibilities to the birds that are actually expected to be in our area on that particular day. That means if you're trying to identify a bird you saw on vacation two months ago, you'll want to adjust the location and date for accurate results. Now let's ID this bird. We'll click on the current location and normally you'll make sure it says today and click on next. But I actually photographed this bird in my yard on April 26th, so I'm going to change the date. to April. 26 and then hit next. Next we're going to indicate size by selecting the silhouette of the bird that it represents. You can choose from sparrow, robin, crow, or goose, or select anything in between. So for this bird, it was smaller than a sparrow. So we will choose this and then click next. And then next we can select up to three colors that we saw. Let's just choose blue. Click next. Now, what was the bird doing? Our bird was on a tree. And then we hit identify. And Merlin will reduce the possible birds from that really big number to just a handful of birds that fit our description and are expected to be in our area right now. Scroll down through the list of possibilities until you see your bird. So we can scroll through these. We definitely saw our bird at the top of the list right here. Our bird is the black-throated blue warbler. And you can also swipe, right? and see the different um, plumages because the males and females and juveniles often look quite different and their appearance can drastically change between breeding and non-breeding plumage. So it's nice to see a variety of the photos for each species. Just to the left of the button marked that's my bird is a speaker. And when you tap that, it will play the song of your bird. If you tap the script just below the bird, 
or the little eye icon on the right hand side, you'll access the field guide. Across the top, you have ID info, sounds, and the range map. When you tap on sounds, you'll see a list of the various songs and calls for each species. This is a good time to talk about birding ethics and using playback in the field. It's important to never play calls during breeding or nesting season, as it can disrupt the birds or put young in danger. You'll also need to ensure that there are no predators around before playing any calls. It's best to just use these to learn calls at home, or if using them in the field, play them at a level that only you can hear. Next, we have the range map. You'll see where they are during breeding season in the orange, wintering season in blue, migration in yellow, and year-round in purple. Notice the green bar across the bottom that says, this is my bird. When you've identified a bird, tap that, and then tap, take me to eBird. This opens up a checklist in the eBird app so that you can report the birds that you saw. Look for my presentation on how to use eBird to report sightings and find birds and new birding locations near you. Now let's talk about photo ID. So we'll go back to home and tap on photo ID. Now the photo ID feature will allow you to take a photo or use one that you already have to identify a bird. From the home screen, select photo ID and then press the camera button if you wanna take a photo or tap to choose photo and select a photo from your camera. You can resize the photo using two fingers to pinch or expand the photo until it fits nicely in the box. Tap next. To illustrate a point, we're just gonna hit identify. And just like that, we have our match. This is the black-bellied whistling duck. But if I scroll down, I can see other possibilities that have no photo and they say that this bird is not currently installed. This happened because we did not enter a location. So it's comparing to birds all around the world. This is why it's important to indicate a date and location. If I continue to scroll to the bottom, we'll see a place where I can change the date and the location. So now once I put in Ocala, I have just these two options now that make a lot more sense for the area. Now let's try sound ID. From the home screen, tap sound ID and the microphone icon, and Merlin will display a spectrogram and list every bird it identifies. Did you notice after it has identified a bird, if it calls again, the name of the bird will highlight in yellow. I absolutely love this feature to help with learning bird calls. The slight lag time between when the bird calls and when the ID shows up is a great opportunity to quiz yourself on what you're hearing. You can replay the recording using the play button in the middle of the screen. If you tap the arrow, And then also if you tap on a bird, the recording will actually skip to a few seconds before it heard that bird call. Touch the down arrow to hear the bird's calls that are on file. 
So for the Carolina Wren, I can see all of the different calls for this bird. And then when you get to the bottom, it says details. If I tap that, it takes you back to your field guide. You can access your sound recordings at any time by using the back button from here. We'll hit it twice. And then here is our list of sound recordings. I delete these regularly by hard pressing on the date. So you just hold on the date and then the delete button pops up and then you hit delete. So you'll wanna delete these on a regular basis so it doesn't take up too much room on your phone. If you've made sound recordings through another app, you can import those and analyze them using the import button on the bottom right hand side. A note of caution, while this app does a fantastic job of identifying birds, it's not 100% accurate. There will be birds that come up on the app that are not actually in the area. Use this more as a tool to know what to look for. And please do not report a bird on eBird unless you either see the bird or are very familiar with its call to a degree of certainty. And last, we'll return to the home screen and select Explore Birds to access our digital field guide. On the top right hand side, you will see three lines representing the filter. Tap that to change the location, date, or sort the bird list. When it comes to the calendar, I suggest keeping it on year round or today. Under the name of each bird, we see a bar chart showing when it's in the location that we've selected, which in our case is Ocala. So if you look at the bar chart, the thicker the line, the more often that bird has been reported. The vertical line represents today. For example, if you look at the snow goose, we see that it's only been reported in the month of February. When you have this list sorted by family, you can also use the icons that are along the right-hand side to jump to different groups of birds. For example, hummingbirds or hawks. And I was just touching the green icons along the right side. You may notice that there are colored dots next to some of the bird's names. The first one you might notice is a blue check mark. That indicates that it's a bird that I have on my life list. Your life list is simply a, a list of birds that you have seen and reported through eBird. The other colored circles indicate the frequency of sightings in our area. No icon means that they are frequent or abundant, as we see with the vultures. An orange half circle is less common. You can see that with the osprey. And a red dot is uncommon or rare, as you see with the snail kite, which based on the bar chart has only been seen in June and based on the thickness of the line only a few times. On the bottom right hand side, you'll see a circle. Tap that and it will update the app to your current location. When you tap on the photo of a bird on the bar chart, it opens up your digital field guide as before, showing ID info, sounds, and the map. If it's a bird that you've reported through eBird, you'll also see the words life list with a blue check mark at the bottom. And this concludes my demonstration of the Merlin app. Look for my next presentation on using the free eBird app to report sightings, locate birding hotspots, and find birds you've never seen before. Thank you.